approximately 50 miles, 80 kilometers north of Sicily, Italy, hidden in the depths of the Tyrrhenian Sea, lies one of Europe's most dangerous and active volcanoes. Stromboli, known as the lighthouse of the Mediterranean for its continuous eruptions, harbors a threat far more deadly than its lava explosions. A scientific study published in 2025 revealed that this volcano can generate a devastating tsunami that would reach the inhabited coast in less than three minutes, making any evacuation practically impossible. The volcanic island of Stromboli, part of the Aeolian archipelago in the southern Tyrrhenian Sea, rises approximately 3,038 feet, 926 meters, above sea level. However, its true magnitude remains hidden beneath the waters, extending more than 6,562 feet, 2,000 meters, below the ocean surface. The northwestern face of the volcano presents an enormous horseshoe-shaped scar known as Sierra del Fuoco, a 5,577-foot 5 wide, 1,700 meters, depression with a 30-degree slope that extends from the summit to the submarine depths. This unstable structure, formed by repeated lateral collapses over the last 13,000 years, represents the region's greatest tsunamigenic threat. The geological history of Sierra del Fuoco reveals a disturbing pattern of catastrophic collapses. The current lateral walls of this depression were formed by a massive collapse approximately 6,000 years ago, while geological evidence suggests that the most recent large-scale collapse occurred during the Middle Ages. Currently, this scar is filled with fragmented eruptive products of various sizes, including volcanic bombs, lapilli, ash, and scoria, alternating with lava flows of modest thickness. The current configuration of Sierra del Fuoco, with unconsolidated material accumulated on steep slopes and eruptive craters positioned at the top of the structure, creates extremely favorable conditions for episodes of instability and partial collapse. Stromboli Volcano has maintained continuous explosive activity for at least 2,000 years, with periodic eruptions lasting a few seconds and occurring at intervals of tens of minutes. This ordinary activity ejects incandescent scoria, ash, and blocks to heights of a few tens to hundreds of meters. However, occasionally, this activity is interrupted by much more intense phenomena, including lava flows, larger explosions, and paroxysms. Paroxysms represent the most energetic eruptions observed at Stromboli, lasting up to a few minutes and ejecting pumiceous bombs and lithic blocks to distances of up to one and a half miles, two and a half kilometers from the craters, generating convective tephra plumes that rise 1.8 to 2.5 miles, three to four kilometers, above the craters, reaching up to 6.2 miles, 10 kilometers, in the largest scale events. Something extraordinary and deeply concerning was revealed by an international team of scientists led by Professor Tommaso Esposti Ongaro of the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology of Italy. The study published in April 2025 presented 150 numerical simulations of volcanic mass movements in Sierra del Fuoco, analyzing volumes ranging from 176 million, 573,000, 5 million, to 1 billion, 59 million, and 40,000, 30 million cubic feet, cubic meters. The results are absolutely alarming and have placed the scientific community in a state of maximum vigilance, especially because the patterns observed in the simulations are consistent with historical events that have already resulted in massive loss of life. The data reveals that subaerial mass movements, those that initiate above sea level, have the capacity to generate tsunami waves three to five times larger than submarine movements of similar volume. The most extreme simulations, involving 1 billion, 59 million, and 40,000 cubic feet, 30 million cubic meters, of volcanic material initiating at an elevation of 1,076 feet, 328 meters, above sea level, predicted maximum wave heights of several tens of meters near Sierra del Fuoco. The initial wave shape recorded by virtual sensors near the coast shows a first crest followed by a depression of comparable amplitude, while submarine movements exhibit an initial depression followed by a higher crest. This difference in wave characteristics has critical implications for the region's tsunami warning systems. The correlation between the volume of mobilized material and maximum wave height follows a non-linear pattern for subaerial movements, with large variations associated with the initial position of the granular mass. For submarine movements, variation is smaller and trends are more linear, but they depend strongly on the initial depth of the mass movement. Counterintuitively, 
Simulations show that for sub-aerial movements, the greatest wave heights are associated with the lowest initial positions, a phenomenon attributed to the rapid deformation of the granular mass that elongates during descent from higher positions, thus reducing the rate of volume injection into the sea. This balance between increased potential energy from higher initial positions and intensified deformation that reduces the efficiency of energy transfer to the water column represents one of the study's most surprising findings. The density contrast between seawater and volcanic material proved to be a second order factor, affecting only slightly the height of the first crest and depression. Simulations tested granular mass densities of 104, 1,667, 125, 2,000, and 156, 2,500 pounds per cubic foot, kilograms per cubic meter, corresponding to density ratios of 0 0.6, 0 0.5, and 0 0.4, respectively. Wave shapes were almost coincident in all cases, except for a 10 to 20 percent increase in the amplitude of the first crest and depression for submarine movements. This finding significantly simplifies the modeling of future scenarios allowing scientists to focus their efforts on the most critical variables, such as volume and initial position of the collapse. The most terrifying aspect revealed by computational simulations is the absolutely devastating speed with which the tsunami would reach inhabited areas of the island. At Spiaggia Lunga Beach, the coastal area closest to Sierra del Foco, the first wave would arrive in approximately 50 to 65 seconds after the collapse begins. At the port of Stromboli, located in the northeastern portion of the island where most of the population is concentrated, the tsunami would reach the coast in 165 to 190 seconds. That is, less than three and a half minutes. In the small village of Ginostra, located on the opposite side of the island, waves would arrive in approximately one minute, leaving practically no time for evacuation. These extremely short arrival times make traditional evacuation virtually impossible, requiring unconventional alert strategies and risk mitigation. The phase velocity of waves increases with wave height, as predicted by theory, so that for the same initial position, larger volumes produce higher and faster waves. For the same volume, subaerial slides produce larger waves with shorter arrival times. The study demonstrated that the observation that the wave shape measured at points near the coast does not initially depend on the volume of the granular mass implies that dispersive effects are not dominant at these distances, allowing spectral properties of the tsunami to be used as a robust indicator in early warning systems. Inundation maps produced by simulations reveal that due to the volcano's steep slopes, the main differences in flooded area are observed in the northeastern part of the island, where the village of Stromboli is located and where there is also the greatest exposure to tsunami risk. The widest and deepest flooding is achieved in those scenarios with the greatest maximum wave height, and the impact of sub-aerial mass movements on the coasts of Stromboli is clearly much greater, with water depth exceeding 33 feet, 10 meters, for the largest hypothetical volume of 1,059,040,000 cubic feet, 30 million cubic meters. The flooded area and associated water depth from sub-aerial mass movements do not vary significantly with the initial elevation of the granular mass, which is consistent with the observation that, despite lower total energy, subaerial mass movements have greater relative tsunami genic potential at lower elevations. The volcano's recent history provides concrete examples of the real threat these simulations represent. Since the beginning of the 20th century, there is evidence of at least five relevant tsunamis, sufficiently large to be observed and affect the coasts of Stromboli Village. The last relevant event occurred on December 31st, 2002, triggered by multiple collapse events that occurred after days of intense effusive activity in Sierra del Foco. This event produced a tsunami with run-up heights locally of up to several meters, severely damaging many buildings, but fortunately resulting in no fatalities. Since 2019, other tsunamis have been observed, all associated with pyroclastic flows generated by paroxysmal eruptions or small flank instabilities during periods of high eruptive intensity. If you are fascinated by these hidden forces of nature and wish to continue learning about the most extraordinary and dangerous geological phenomena on the planet, subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so you don't miss upcoming content about volcanism, tsunamis, and the natural events that shape our world. Scientific knowledge about these phenomena not only satisfies our curiosity about the forces that govern Earth, but also represents our best defense against their devastating effects. 
allowing at-risk communities to prepare adequately and potentially save thousands of lives when the next major eruption or collapse inevitably occurs. 